we have all these platforms now, right? It's the closest we have to a kind of this great, this, this, this human global consciousness and what it represents. And so what does it say about us? This is supposed to be designed as a kind of a community, uh, a, you know, a, a courtyard where people are sharing ideas and talking and exchanges. There's so much ideology, right? There's so much identity politics permeating the soul, the way that things have been constructed around us that we just identify with a title. It could be Republican, it could be yeah. this, it could be that. And then whatever that stands for, we just adopt it as that, that's, we're back in that team. Yeah. And you can no longer see clearly. You can no longer think objectively. And that's a real big problem. And so what do we, so how do you reconcile that? The human being is a very strange beast. On the one hand, we have the ability to create such beauty. Oh my God. Yeah. I was just listening to Paul Ferrati mm. on the way here. Beautiful. Yeah. And on the other hand, we have the ability to destroy ourselves in which we're actively doing it. And one of my beliefs is that there is a God. There truly is a God because we haven't destroyed ourselves yet. We are actively trying to do that over and over and over again, the self-destructive thing. Because what that does, that keeps us blind to the truth. It keeps us from awakening to the shadow life. That, and that's sort of significant, that's important. Once you understand that, you might be able to let it go. So the, the internet in, in, in all of its, you know. And Forms I, I, of. Yeah, I don't do social media, yeah. but you know, I know that some of the internet stuff is pretty, pretty corrupted, but, but that's who we are. That, that's part of who we are. So the, the question of, Interesting. you know, who's in charge. Interesting. The bonbon eating slob on the, on the couch watching TV doing nothing? Is that who's in charge? <laughs> or is it the person that says, I'm going to accomplish something. Yeah. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to train in the gym. I'm going to be the best I can possibly be. Who's in charge? Yeah. We, have, we have those two choices all the time. Yeah. I ask them the question, is this fulfilling for you individually? Pull back the curtain. Mm. Choose again. Yeah, it just seems like there's such an unwillingness um, to bend. That's really what I want to do. And like when I take your book and I, I take the wisdom that you share and, and I, try to, I try to kind of compress it into various phrases or statements, things that might be meaningful to folks. Drop the guard a little bit. Positive thought. Don't take the worst in everything that you see and read. Take a step back. You know, let it kind of process for a little bit. Um, try to understand what the guy across from you. I mean, we are legally trained folks. We always know that there's two sides mm -hmm. to everything. Start to view things a little bit from the other side and just open up to the possibility that it's not all the way you think it is. This raises an interesting uh, aspect of who we are. So, and this, this is the, the origin of conflict. And I think when you understand that, there might be an opening for healing. So first there is perception. Mm. So we perceive through our senses. And I walk outside and I look at the world and the world is flat. Okay, that's my perception, it's flat. So then that perception turns into a belief. Mm -hmm. So I do it every day, I come out and I say, it's, it's now I believe, because every day I'm out there and the world's flat. Yeah. Then I have other people agree with me and that becomes a judgment. Uh huh. Okay, uh -huh. now, so far, uh, I have all the proof and the experience through my sensory experience and other people agree that we have a judgment. Now, when that judgment becomes a justification, you got major problems. Whoa. Because let's take that example. Now, the other example is people that go out and they went in an airplane, they say, well, the world is round, it's a globe, mm. okay. And that's my perception, and then that develops a belief and a justification, and then you have the, the, or a judgment and then a justification. So you have two opposite justifications lurking at each other, mm. and they point, at mm -hmm. each other and they say, well, you're wrong. No, you're wrong. And they end up, well, you know, typically yeah. killing each other. Yeah. Right? So that, that's kind of the origin of it. 
Yes. And when you get to justification, you got problems. Uh-huh. You, it's so hard to to reverse that once you get to justification. Even asking people, well, don't believe your justification. No, no you, you could be wrong. It's not going to work. Mm. So the, the message is understand, understanding and compassion. Understand that that's where we come from. Mm. We base our justification on a judgment that's based on a belief that's based on a perception from our bodies. Have you ever seen a dead body? I have. Okay. So if I was in charge, I was telling one of the members here earlier, if I was in charge, which I'll never be in charge, (laughs) I would order every young person who's going to get a driver's license have to go to the coroner's office. We'd set it up. Coroner and you'd have various bodies on slabs and it would be covered with a blanket and or a sheet and the coroner would go okay pull back the sheet this person died from a motorcycle accident okay and you get to you get to look at it and you look at it and you experience well there's no energy there Mm. there's no it's gone yeah then you go okay this is a drug addict died of a died of an overdose this is a gunshot wound and you get to experience these things because the choices you make just as an example as a driver on the road mm. can have horrible consequences yeah. can kill others or kill yourself mm. okay so be conscious of that now it would be shocking and mothers may not want it but it would be a painful experience that you'd never forget yeah. ever ever you're never going to forget that. Yes. And when you have that extra drink and get in the car and think, well, you know, I remember that, uh, you know, the coroner, yeah. the, the guy was killed by a motorcycle or whatever. Yeah. You may not. You may call for lift or something. Mm-hmm. So um, those, those experiences come from the perception. And you're not, our perceptions aren't always right. Our feelings aren't always accurate. Well, that's... That's a hell of a thing. I know it is. Right? I know. That's a, that's a little bit of an irritant for people watching yeah, this thing. Because there's you so You could many. be wrong. Your perception could be wrong. The yeah. world could be round. Yeah. You, you, you know, th- there's, there's an example of radio. Like a wave. Like, or radio like, a, like a, yeah. You can't prove it. Prove it. Well, it exists all over the place. Yeah. So our senses may not get it. We may not get up the, the, the yeah. scope of colors and the scope of sounds. Yeah. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Yes. Yes. So where does the energy go on a body? So if, if it's true that energy isn't created or, or, or disposed of, yeah. where does it go? I think it was Lex Fridman interviewing a Navy SEAL. And the Navy SEAL uh, talked about a uh, gunfight, whatever had happened, and, and one of their guys had died. They got shot and they died. And so... He went over to the guy and and looked at him to like they say I think that's Johnny. We got to you know went over there. He's like that's not Johnny because he couldn't recognize Johnny because he's only seen Johnny alive. Yeah. But something happens when that thing leaves. I don't know what it is. I've seen it too. I've seen it with you know family members where I've been there at the finish at the end, and it's a it's a totally different thing. It's not even. It's something has left. So our bodies real? That's an interesting question. There's a lot of questions about that when people are talking about, uh, they're talking about, um, you know, this whole thing is a, uh, you know, it's a simulation, that whole simulation theory, right? And, and so if, in, in, there's, a, there's a cognitive neuroscientist named uh, Donald um, Hoffman, Donald Hoffman, I mean, this guy will blow, I mean, he's a mathematician, physics, all these things, but this guy's talking about stuff that is like just, right? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, it gets you thinking. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, yeah, Newton came up with his set of laws, and we talked about the apple, gravity, and all this guy. Space time, Einstein came with, and he had space time, and it's the speed of light, and that's that's the speed limit of the universe, and it's all these different things. And then it runs out of runway at a certain point because, well, wait a second. Why doesn't this equation or this model match reality of a particular experiment? So could it be that this... And we can't explain it. ...world is a projection? Well, that's what you say in your book. Could it be that we're sitting in a theater 
watching a movie on a screen thinking we're the actors in the movie screen and then someone gets up and leaves the theater and goes to the projection room and says, oh, wait a second, there's a projector. Yeah. The light coming from the, the source goes through the film and projects it and comes back into the theater and says, hey, wait a second, you guys, you guys aren't the, 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 the actors, you aren't the, the shadows on the theater, <laughs> right? Plato's allegory. Right, yeah. what happens then? Yeah. They don't want to know that, so they have to kill the guy or whatever. But, but so, so the, the interesting metaphor uh -huh. uh, to that is um, it, 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 it ties in with uh, the Wizard of Oz. Mm. Have we fallen asleep and dreaming a dream of, of exile, as they say? Your, your perception, belief, judgment, justification uh, kind of analysis there, those, those four points, you know, you can't even get past, I mean, you can't even just, you can't get past perception. perception. You can't, no. You can't get past It's that. oriented on the body. Yeah. The body. And, so, and I ask the question, is the body real? If you've seen a dead body, yeah. you go, there's nothing there. That's just yeah. basically you know, ma matter, that's just dust. So there's no life there. So if, there, if that's the case, then is the, is, where is consciousness lie? It can't be anywhere in the body. It's it can't, not in the brain. It can't, well, if, if, because that's part of the body. So would the, would the brain be a sending receiving unit to the more collective mind that, that uh, Carl Jung speaks of? Mm -hmm. and when you step back and, and study Shakespeare, you go, one guy wrote this, that's unbelievable. Yeah. But the truth is, so Einstein, could you say Einstein didn't create that? Can you say Mozart didn't create that? Can you say uh, 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 Leonardo da Vinci, da Vinci and Michelangelo? Have you ever seen the, um, the Pieta in, in the Vatican? I absolutely started just crying. Wow. Wow. I could do it right. Wow. So forgive me. It is, it, it's unbelievable. One man couldn't, couldn't have done that. So when he finished that magnificent piece of work, they didn't believe he did it. Wow. So what did he do? That night he goes in and he taps in his name. Wow. Then the next day they go, oh, well, I guess he did it. Wow. They didn't believe it. It's hard to believe a human being did that. So did somebody else do it? No, he's tapped in to the higher mind, the grand mind, the grand consciousness. Collective consciousness. Yeah, it's not the meat sack. It's not the meat sack. You get hooked up. Einstein's in a, in a freaking uh, uh, train watching posts go by. And that triggered E equals MC square. What? That's crazy. What? Yeah, it's just a... So Shakespeare did it. He had downloads. We're all able to do that if we have the willingness. You just need a little willingness to be open. That's it. That's it. You could be wrong. Mm. You could be wrong that the great Oz doesn't have the power. You could be wrong that the world is flat. Just be open to it. 20 years ago when we sat here, or when we stood in here and we put the painting on the wall 20 years ago, and you asked me that question, where were you? You're about the age that you were about the age that I am right now. Yeah. That time. What what where were you in this journey? Well, besides getting beat up most of the time <laughs> and, and wondering why just just the inquisitive mind. Uh-huh. The evolution of the inquisitive mind, I think. Always and, asking. Because as a, as a trial attorney, hmm. you're going to put people on the stand and you're going to ask them questions. But you don't want, you, you want to be able to control the narrative. Mm -hmm. so, so you're always inquisitive. Well, what if, what if I ask this person this question? What if they say A or B? Yeah. What, well, how do I handle that? So that, that inquisitive mind has always been there. Uh-huh.